How's it going, everybody? It's Rosie here for Astrophysography. I am back from about a month of struggling with my guiding. Uh, I seem to be back in operation, and it's clear. Uh, we're in summer now, and it, well, we're spring getting into summer now, so nights are getting really short. Considering it's a Saturday, and it's new moon, and I don't have to go to work tomorrow, heck yes, am I going to go out tonight. So the issues I was having with guiding was uh, that I couldn't, couldn't at all. It was just choppy all over the place. Um, I could barely even get a 30 second or a minute sub whilst the guiding was active. So it was just bonkers, it was all over the place. And I don't know what happened with it. Maybe it was something to do with the change of camera. I just don't know, it just poof, stopped working. So after a, So after a lot of trial and error, uh, I was actually told to just flat out reset PhD, uh, keep everything default. So it actually thinks I've got a 300 millimeter guide scope on at the minute, not 206, but that seems to be working. And I'm also using, I've got managed to reconnect the mount to it. I'm back to using SynScan, which wants to work all of a sudden. So that might've been it. I'm more inclined to say that the ASCOM connection is helping a lot because it, it knows more information. However, the guide scope length and the calculations it makes are also important. So who knows? It's working now. I'm not touching it. So <laughs> I'm getting a really good chart as well. I think I had like 0.5 error or something like that. So we're looking pretty. We're sitting pretty. So tonight, uh, it's an interesting target that I'm shooting because of the new moon period. I want to shoot the elephant's trunk nebula, but because I, I want to put a little HA onto it, I'll wait for a moon period to use that. So tonight we're using something still in the Cepheus, and that is the Iris Nebula, uh, NGC 7023, I believe it is. Irish Neb... Irish? The Irish... The Irish... The Iris Nebula is a reflection nebula similar to the Pleiades uh, where all the stuff around it is illuminated by a nice bright star. So it's been on my radar for a while so now we've actually set up and shooting it. So the Iris Nebula I'm doing three minute subs at minus 15 degrees and 398 gain on the Altair Astro Hypercam 183C Protec. I'm really happy now that it seems that I'm getting work out of this camera. I did an hour and a half on the uh, Whirlpool Galaxy and it just great quality. Uh, there was a lot of electroluminescent glow coming from the right hand side of the image, which didn't calibrate out. And I was informed by Stacy that that might actually be because I dithered. So that electroluminescent glow appears on each frame and if you dither, obviously the frame moves about. So each imprint is slightly different. Apparently EL Glow is really easy to calibrate out because it's linear. Um, but if it's moved in the images, I suppose that makes it more difficult. So I'm actually not dithering tonight. I'm just gonna rely on my darks and my other calibration frames. So we'll see what happens. I doubt I'm gonna regret it. When I wasn't dithering with my DSLR, I didn't regret it too much, but I obviously did it a lot with the DSLR. Right now, I think I've done enough talking. Let's let's get out of the living room. Let's get outside. It's getting cold. So going from not being able to get any uh, any guiding to a guide craft like this feels pretty good. The uh, AR 130 guide camera seems to be working nicely. These are currently the subs I'm getting. It still is a bit windy, so I expect my I expect a few photos every now and again to have to be dropped. Yeah.
sweating quite a bit. And nice and cold. Speaking of cold, I'm pretty cold, so I'm gonna fire up Team Viewer and uh, go inside. Uh, judging by the time, it's about midnight now, so I'm looking about two and a half, maybe three hours on Iris. With any luck, I'm gonna have a nice image at the end of this. I am now going to go upstairs and probably play the PlayStation because my laptop is outdoors. So yeah, fire up Team Viewer, watch it on the phone whilst I'm playing the PlayStation. Oh, technology these days. Don't like being completely remote. It's actually a lot of fun going out with the telescope, but I wouldn't say no to a, <laughs> to a permanent setup at all. So it's Sunday, I got in last night at about 4am, so <laughs> considering it's cloudy, I'm shooting my flats now. I don't usually shoot sky flats, uh, I usually play it against the light inside the living room, but I thought I'll try sky flats today. So one thing I forgot to do, well, one thing I did last night was I left the gain I changed the gain in APT to 2000 whilst I was focusing because it just helped see the star better through the battlemail mask. May have forgot to change that back. Yeah, so I might actually have uh, about 21 frames at gain 2000, which works out to be about 63 minutes of data. But I'm still going to use them. I'm not going to get rid of them. They're still useful. But I noticed and I was able to swap it back down to 398, which I believe is Unity for this camera. Uh, so I'm having to shoot a dedicated dark set for the Gain 2000 images, but that's just enough. I'll only shoot like 10, maybe 15 dark frames just so I can use them. And I need to make lights at Gain 2000 as well. I mean, flats at Gain 2000. It's like, <clears throat> what, a, what a farce that is. But we all make mistakes. I think one thing I really want to invest in next is probably an automated focuser to stop issues like that from happening. It'll do it a lot better than I will. Uh, so yeah, I think my next purchase might be an autofocuser. It's lunchtime. The telescope's got to do its thing. It needs to cool down. It needs to shoot darks and flats and stuff. So I'm going to go get some lunch and some coffee because I am still tired. <laughs> so yeah, thanks for watching. Have a good day, Clear Skies. All the best fortunes upon you. See you later.